Zip Dibbles. Jada, I'm back to answer some more goddamn questions. <clears throat> it's going to finish the ones printed off. We'll see if we finish them today. Didn't finish them yesterday. Then I got a few new ones put in a goddamn word pad here that I'll bring up. And if that, I think it's just two or three. If that's not enough, then I'll have to pull up the fucking next video online. Or not the next video, just a video, because I don't know where the fuck I left off. But uh, hopefully this is enough. I don't have to do it. resort to that. Uh, this looks like another. These are names. So these are presumably either order questions or they emailed them um, because they're not user IDs. But I printed these off several days ago. Now I haven't got to them, so I forget which was which. So, but it's one of the others. Mark Zanowitz. Hey, hi, J Dog. What are your favorite currently active bands on the Hell's Headbangers roster? Also, do you prefer the version of Perdition Temples, The Tempters Victorious with Gene on vocals, or the one with Impurath on vocals? Uh, I guess I answer that. Uh, I mean, I liked both, you know, um, Perdition Temple and. Uh, versions uh impurath the thing is of what's uh interesting about him is with black witchery that's one of the main standout things i really like about black witchery is his vocals i think they're very very aggressive and just just sick sound and my only complaint with black witchery is it begins to become an uh the band as a whole becomes a bit ear fatiguing to where it blurs together a little bit too much um uh, that's why i didn't need like virtually every release but as far as production as a whole, when I think of it, I just think of Gene on vocals. So, you know, it's cool to hear something different. But I mean, as, as the, the front man of the band, I, just, I, I, in my mind, I just think Gene. Last question. Is there any chance of HH doing an LP reissue of Deceased Supernatural Addiction? Or does Relapse have a death grips on that, on the rights to that one? Uh, thanks and love for the videos. Um, yeah, we'll probably do Supernatural. I don't think it's on the agenda right now. I think the next one is, so vinyl-wise, should be Blueprints coming out. I talked about my Luck of the Corpse idea on camera. Uh, apparently, King didn't see that video. What do you think about the idea, King? Although, I'm pretty sure it's going to be just yes. Uh, with <laughs> I'm pretty confident we'd be able to do Supernatural, and I would like to, uh, again, because we did press uh, LP picture this, but it's, what year was that, 2014, 15? Sounds about right. It's been a little while. This is probably due for another goddamn pressing, and I'd be totally into it. And then we did the CD as well. Long story short is, I mean, the reason why we kind of do those with uh, Relapse is, yeah, I, I mean, I don't think it's a secret. Fucking King was pretty vocal about it. He pretty much told Relapse, go fuck themselves. He's like, I want Hells to do this shit. He, he made some claims that they, they that they um over the years, and he's been very open about it too. I've seen it in other interviews just like that, that, that I don't know, he, he feels that they fucked them or held the band back or owed them copies. I don't I don't remember all the full story, but long story short is they kind of just, the vibe I get is they're kind of like, ah, just King, just whatever. Leave us alone. Do what you want to do. That's the vibe I got, which was to our benefit. Great, because it is a little annoying, too. I can kind of see King's distaste, because I do. Again, not everybody. I Like I said, we I don't even know if that Renny Jaffe still works over at Relapse, but he was always cool to me. We traded LPs and stuff, but when I think relapse, especially now, because they don't even do like the distro and shit anymore, it's just a uh, fulfillment center. I, I mean, in all honesty, do any of those guys over there even listen to Deceased? There might be one or two. Like I said, maybe Rennie or something, somebody. But now that's not Matt Jacobson no more for years on end. It's like, it's, I don't know. It's just a lot of those guys, like, do they listen to Cease? They even know who they are. So it's kind of like, as a fan, it's like, can we just... You know, if you guys don't really care that much, too, you know, put out your dying fetus and let's leave, leave the fucking uh, shit to the real fans, a.k.a. Hells over here. You know, put it out by real fans. That's, granted, obviously, it's coming from a very biased fucking person, <laughs> but I don't know. That's got, that's how I fucking feel about it. So, yeah, definitely up for it. And I think, uh, I, yeah, I wouldn't see why not, unless the only thing, the reason we probably wouldn't do it is if King gets a little impatient because he wants that specific one out, like, let's say, next year or something. And our release schedule's tied up. And then he has like another other underground label do it because he's worked with other labels. And uh, they could crank it out first because he's, let's say he's doing a, another mini tour or something. He wants his copies for a show. Then I can see somebody beating us to the punchline for that since our, our release schedule is tied up all the way to the 2025, like I've already stated that. Um, in that case, somebody else might do it, but he hasn't brought it up. So if he was to bring it up today, I mean, realistically speaking, when you say 2025, that sounds crazy, but in all honesty, that's really not. Because think about it. You talk about it today. You think, uh, this goes for, forget deceased, this goes any band. You talk about putting out a release with Hells or any label today, 
Do you think very next day, record this on a Sunday, Monday, that, that you have files in your fucking hand? Fuck no. If you're lucky at the end of the goddamn month, that's like Speedy Gonzalez within a month. So that's a month right there. Okay, now you got materials. Think the layout guy fucking just gets it done the next day? Our sure as fuck don't. You're waiting on, if it's Speedy Gonzalez again, another month. We're in two months. We're two months in, brah, brah. Now it's just laid out. Then from there, submit it to the plants. Plants, turnaround times, when they were good, was three goddamn months. So that's a minimum. That's a minimum. When you're talking about doing a release, if everything was speedy as fuck, Hell's release schedule was caught up, everything, the fastest humanly possible you're going to see something done is five months. That's fast as humanly possible, and I can honestly tell you, I don't think that's ever happened in the entire company history, and I don't think that ever will happen in the entire company history. So when you say in 2025, let's say May 2025, we were able to do Supernatural Addiction, if we were talking about it today. What is that? So that's uh, five months, 12, 17 months, and we're in October, 20 months. I mean, it's not awesome, but it's not that shitty. Uh, talking about it today... Everything I just said, realistically, you should expect minimally a year. Because, And again, part of it's like, well, what a bunch of slow fucks. Nine times out of ten, dude, half the time's on your guys' fucking ass is the man to get us the shit. And especially if they're recording something, oh, the recording's not done. It'll be done, done next week, bro. And it never is. So it's like part of it's on us, but part of it's on uh, you too. And then the other parts on the goddamn pressing plant, which we have zero goddamn control over. So, and then to answer your very first question, Favorite active band on Hell's Headbangers roster? I mean, that, that gets a little complicated for me because when you say active, I mean, uh, obviously the first obvious is going to be, say, let's say, Nunslaughter. Uh, but the stuff like Pharmacist even count because we just did the uh, LP of their second album. Is that a band? I mean, it's an active band. Is it on Hell's Headbangers? And then as, as a whole, do I like them more than Nunslaughter? No. I mean, they, they only got, you know, two full lengths and some EPs. They haven't earned their stripes that strong yet, but as far as new bands, they're, they're great. You know, then you got Spider, who that's that's on Hell's Headbangers. They're an active band, but they're one they're one album in. You know, how 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 many albums are they gonna do? They gonna do five albums. If they do five albums, we know that we know the album rule. We already been down that. Are they gonna fuck it up by then? It's nothing against them. Most bands do. That's also we'll see. I'll I'll, I'll keep checking them out until they do. Um, so you got all those variables. So with all those variables, I would say just the easy go to would be would be Nunslaughter. And it's goddamn page. This is from anonymous. He said he said because he we write this at the top, uh, so I didn't put his name. So I don't I don't remember who it is from it myself. So I purposely that's I don't purposely uh, say the name, which I don't even know why. It doesn't even seem like anything bad whatsoever. Uh, hey J Dog, don't give away away my real name. All right, I know this isn't a big order this time, but this is the best I can do for now. Hey, small order is better than no order. Bra bra. Two quick questions for the channel. Number one, is there anyone in the scene you don't, you think doesn't get enough credit or enough respect that you think should? Um, let's get back to that. What's the second one? Number two is, do you know of a band called Delusion? They're Brian's band before he joined, Nun, joined Nunslaughter for the GOAT lineup. Yeah, Brian Bergeron. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with the band Delusion. As a matter of fact, um, Redefining Dark, I think it was Redefining Dark, yeah. Put uh, put the stuff out on a CD. I don't think he did a vinyl for it. CD and cassette, maybe, but CD. Yeah, I thought it was okay. I mean, I didn't love it. Uh, but yeah, I'm familiar with the band. Um, as far as credits in the underground scene, credit and respect. I mean, are you mean as an individual or a band? Um. Hmm. That gets hairy too, because and not to mention, I don't want to go into conversations I've already had talked about a million times when I mentioned the main bands you don't know, Disaster, Denial of God, Nunslaughter, Sadistic Intent. Uh, obviously, that you could throw that in the category as not getting enough credit because there's people that claim they listen to underground music or metal music and they literally don't even know who those bands are, which is fucking mind blowing to me, especially. It's, it's, it's one thing if you're just the fucking Applebee's guy that's just hanging out at the bar and you like, claim you like, you like i like all kinds of music and i like aggressive music too cool it's not like he's this is like his his, his main endeavor or his his career or his full-time job or his full-time interest it's just it's just something he 
like some music in the background. So whatever, whatever, he, whatever he heard is what he likes. I, I get that. Where they're not, not everybody's taking it as seriously as myself or somebody else because they're not as passionate about it. I, I can understand that, but when you're somebody like on social media, YouTube, and you're making videos and oh, coming across as kind of like, again. For a lack of better terms, an authority, because I'm not saying that they're all coming on the same their authority, but let's call it like it is. For example, if you, this is the best exact analogy I can do, use. If you were to search anything on YouTube for like a how to do, let's just say my other things I know about nutrition. Let's say you're trying to find out anything about nutrition, whether it be for just health, improving blood markers, or losing body weight, right? And let's just say you're a YouTube somebody. Wouldn't you kind of like whoever came up on the topic and that's all they're talking about in their video, that they're somewhat of an authority, somewhat of an educated person on the topic? You would, you guys watching this that don't know much about it, you would just automatically assume that, right? Why is it any different than when you're coming over to a metal scene that let's just say a young 15-year-old, he's trying to get into like heaviest death metal bands or something, and you get some fucking JoJo-ass fucking ham and egg or motherfucker on here, which is a lot of them on here. And they never even heard of Nunslaughter. That's where it's a little bit of a problem. It's like, dude, you don't even know. You don't even know the bit. You know, it's a lot. That's one. I'm sorry. At this point, it's one of the fucking basics because you're not in underground music. It's not as basic as big as Deicide and shit. But again, if you're making videos and trying to almost educate people on the topic, you should know more than just A fucking B C. Just like an example, the guy giving the nutrition advice. If he knows barely more than you do watching, you'd be thinking, why the fuck does this guy, how is this guy an educator? Why does he have a channel? That's what I'm fucking talking about. That's what I'm getting at. So in a context like that, again, the guys that never heard of, never heard of sadistic intent, no names mentioned, older than me, by the way. Okay, you don't need to like them, you don't need to love them, but you got a fucking YouTube channel giving out recommendations and shit like that. And I and I understand that, man, that you're not calling yourself an authority, um, but it's just like what? Like, what do you mean you never heard of them? Don't even know who they are. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I've heard every fucking band of the sun too, and things haven't slipped by me. But 99 times out of 100, I'm at least aware of the band. I'm like, yeah, didn't give them much of a chance. Could I identify it on the player if you played it blindly in the background? I walked in and say, hey, who are you listening to? There's a lot of those. No. But I'm at least aware of who the fuck they are. You know what I mean? Or what scene they come from. Or it, it, I have a generalized idea. As opposed to some of these guys, they don't even, it's like you don't even know the basics, man. Like, why? why, why? So in that, in that context, I think those guys don't get enough credit. But again, it depends on how you want to break it down. But that's kind of how I, because outside that, I mean, for the most part, it's kind of like who's anyone like who to get credit, like like you know what I mean. I guess that's just personal opinion. Uh, Nelson Artiga, hey J Dog, are you guys throwing another Hell's Head Bash? If so, get the GBK and Argleson guys. That that shit would be sick. For starters, I gotta, I, I maybe I might even title this video. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, and I do like you guys asking questions. But I mean, I've answered this several times on this uh, channel and in person. The the number one question I get asked in person, the number one by far, there is not even something that comes close to second is, is Hell's Headbangers doing another fest? Is Hell's Headbangers doing another head bash, et cetera? And if so, when? Got to be honest, I'm sick of fucking answering this. So I'm going to answer it here again. And I'm going to, uh, maybe I'll title it. We'll see, we'll see what other juicy shit comes up in this fucking, uh, video that I might feel uh, name it. In case you haven't noticed, yeah, I make no bones about it. I, I title my videos, they get people like, huh, what did he say? This fucking uh, dickhead had the audacity to say, what? So you click on it. That, that's the thing. The ones that have the least juicy titles get the least views. It's obvious. There's sometimes I'm posting a video and I'm literally like, ah, this title, but I don't want to put something that's completely asinine that had nothing to do with the topic whatsoever. So it's got to be somewhat of something I talked about. I put the most juicy, controversial Holy shit, this guy's a fucking dick. Holy shit, what did this fucking Klansman have to say? Whatever dumbass shit people put in their heads. I gave that, so they click on it. And those are the ones that by far, I see the views. It's most views, yeah. Because drama and, and, and messing up fucking pink panty bad boys' is fucking pussy-ass fucking vaginas is what gets the goddamn views. So we'll see. But uh, the Hell's Head Bash, I, 
No time soon, bro, bro. I'm honestly, I'm just kind of burnt out of the answer to this question. I don't know. We'll see. No time soon. Uh, it's oversaturated with fests in the U.S., so there's a hell of a lot of competition. Uh, wait for all this dumbass fucking uh, vid shit to die down, which it has died down, but I hear there's another batch coming and blah, blah, blah. There might be more restrictions. Granted, personally, when it comes to that shit, as long as they don't shut my gym down, I don't really give a fuck. Personally, 2020 was about was one of my favorite years in existence, so I could care less. I, th I thought it was a great goddamn time. The only thing I didn't like was the gym shut down. That was literally fucking it. Gave me tons of excuses not to go to events that I didn't want to go to anyways. Um, it was great. And uh, and and sales were best they ever been for health. So <laughs> so for business, too, it was fucking best. So I, I care less about any of that, but if you're trying to put on a fest, it's going to kind of put the goddamn kibosh on it. Um, and, and the GBK and Argos look, guys, it's just funny that I talked about that yesterday. I mean, for monetary reasons, but in all honesty, I'm, I'm kind of so sick of hearing about both those goddamn bands. Uh, I, I, like I said, I like... The first GBK, and I thought the new album was pretty good. But in all honesty, the, those bands rubbed me the wrong way because I, I'm telling you right now, again, just with my video titles, 50% of their fame is because of controversy, drama. People, just because it's dramatic, they're racist. They're, 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 you know what I'm saying? That's what it is. Just like the majority of my goddamn videos that get the most views is what's going to be the most scuttlebutt. All I have to do, which I'm not going to do, because especially if it's if if I didn't put in the um if I didn't talk about it whatsoever, all I have to do is put the goddamn word racist in the fucking title line and brrr, most clicks, by far, It's because that's what you guys all want to see and shit. And you go, no, not me, not me. Well, you're the one that clicks. So yes, you do. Y yes, you, you watching, yeah. And that's fucking pathetic that you need to do that. How about why, why like talking about yeah, fuck yeah, man, new hemorrhage album in 2024. I'm not saying there is one, but I'm saying that would get 300 views. Nobody would care. People don't care about real now. People don't care about real tops. They care about bitch fucking shit. And it's annoying as fuck. So that's why these, these two bands, they rub me a little the wrong way. Not them personally, but just their fan base. Bitch fucking shit. They're falling off for goddamn dramatic drama. And they're hating all their controversies over Again, you're just helping their goddamn fame, the people that hate them. It's like, God. so I got to be bring two bands that I think are, for, for starters, I hate to break it to you, and my... Humble ass fucking opinion. Hemorrhage sends both those bands put together home on a fucking stretcher. I would take them any goddamn day of the week over them. But yet, Hemorrhage wouldn't even draw half the fucking crown in the stupid ass land. So it's annoying. So okay, for as a business, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta bring these fucking KKK members over here. <laughs> so, so they're affiliated with. I don't know if that's the case. Still fucking funny to say. Uh, I gotta bring them in as a business move, just to sell tickets. It's, it's fucking annoying, because everybody's fucking sucks and is a fucking poser. That's, that's what's annoying about it. How about come out to a real show, Rob Rod? Destroy 666, Sadistic Intent, Disaster, Gandhi Throne, The Fucking Hem, Fucking Pharmacist. There's your Hell's Head Bash. How many of you poser-ass motherfuckers are coming out to that fucking show? Because that would be a banger. All dog picks, goddammit. Fuck your GBK and Argo Slug. Yeah, they're okay, but goddamn. Fuck. My list just fucking smoked them. And God damn it, while we're at it, if we're in the year 2020, whatever the fucking year anniversary is, 24 next year, get exhumed on there and play the 25th year year anniversary of the entire Slaughter Call, front to fucking back. Another fucking banger of an album that smokes both those bands that have the 90% of you fucking posers watching have you goddamn fucking heard or damn sure don't fucking know. There's your goddamn head, head bash. How do you like it, brah, brah? Cassidy Harvey. I mean, I was wondering, is this a lady or a fucking dude? Because you could go either way with the name. And uh, I'm just kind of curious because there's not very many ladies that comment on my goddamn... Uh, oh, this is a goddamn... Is this an order question? Uh, Cassidy Harvey. J-Dog, really enjoying the channel daily entertainment. Fuck yeah. Anyway, got a question for the dog. What's the story with the Vrethren were Werewolf LP? I don't know. Ask Werewolf. I'm curious as to wh why there are like 15 colors. So was I. It's annoying as goddamn fuck. 15 things in a separate box. I don't know if that was the uh, Werewolf Records or the goddamn band themselves that wanted it, but it sure as fuck had nothing to do with me. Again, just because we distribute them doesn't mean I'm making the calls, doesn't mean we put them out, doesn't mean I'm hanging out with these guys, doesn't mean I fucking know them, doesn't mean I know what they're about, like their breakfast cereal, doesn't mean I know if they're racist or not, doesn't mean I know if they care or not, doesn't mean I read their lyrics, doesn't mean I know any of that fucking shit, just means they submit a goddamn audio, and or, or in this case, not even that, we distribute their shit, the label. Got the new Cannibal Corpse in before we fucking heard it. Right? That's a poor analogy, favorite fucking band, but you know what the fuck I'm saying. We get shit by all kinds of labels. So I don't I don't know what the fucking reason was. But I thought it was dumb as fuck, to say the least. So I'm there with you on that. Unless, unless it's the best damn LP in the last 20 years. It's not. That seems more than a little excessive. It was definitely uh, 
more than more than excessive. <laughs> also, if you still have any Malice Divine CDs, if you can toss one in, sure will, bra bra or sis sis. Not sure what you are. Put it in the goddamn comments too. To answer your question, I'm curious. God damn it. I'm curious how many goddamn women actually watch this shit. Nothing but fucking sausage over here. Sausage and fucking posers that rather see GBK over hemorrhage. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys for giving me a, a chance to pick up stuff I missed out on over the years. You got it. That's what they were there for, bra bra. So, anyways, uh, yeah, 20 minutes I got back. I got the brand new questions. Put the fucking word pad, but we'll save that for goddamn tomorrow. Gotta clear all this whole goddamn page in. So, yeah. Put your goddamn head bash in there. What do you think? What do you think J-Dog's fucking up? That, that's his head bash of what he'd want for fucking pleasure. Put your head bash in there. Are we doing it? Who the fuck knows? We'll see. If we are, don't hold your breath. It ain't gonna be anytime soon. It's gonna be minimally three to five years. Uh, if ever. But we'll, we'll see. I'm up for it. I, I, I enjoy doing it. So, we'll see. Uh, but put your picks in there and, uh, and all the other comments, questions, concerns you got. And then see you tomorrow. Later, goddammit.